The fate of the convicted Boston Marathon bomber Johar Tsarnaev is now in the hands of the United States Supreme Court. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Paula Eben. The court just heard arguments from the government and Tsarnaev's legal team focusing on whether there were mistakes made at his trial and whether his death sentence should be reinstated. WBZ's Nick Giovanni listened in. And Nick, it was very interesting the questioning this morning. The justices asked some very pointed questions to both sides. Very much so, Paula. The hearing just wrapped about 30 minutes ago. And keep in mind, the federal appeals court here in Boston threw out Zarnayev's death penalty last year based on two rulings. One, potential jurors should have been asked specific questions about their exposure to extensive news coverage of the 2013 marathon bombings. Now, the government argued considerable steps were taken to screen jurors. The justices had only a few follow-up questions about that issue, though. They focused predominantly on the second issue, dealing with evidence excluded during the sentencing phase that suggested Johar's brother, Tamerlan, was involved in an unsolved murder in Waltham back in 2011. That was the subject of much further scrutiny by the justices. And the defense argues Johar was influenced by his brother. While the government contends that evidence could have created significant confusion while not changing the jury's conclusion ultimately. Now, the government also argued the Court of Appeals usurped the court's discretion in excluding that evidence. I want you to hear some of what was said this morning, starting with the Justice Department addressing Justice Kagan, followed by an exchange between Justice Amy Coney Barrett and Zarnayev's defense team. Because to require an entire new penalty phase in this case, to force all the victims to come back and testify and have to reassess the, the same sentence is, I think, Mr. a Fagan, less reasonable. Part, part of the problem is that the district court withheld information. And so the defense attorney could not proffer everything at once because it didn't have full knowledge of what was there. Now that they do, they can show us, how, A, how pertinent that information was, and B, how it could have dovetailed easily with the, what they already had. Well, you Your can't Honor, put, first of all... You can't put the cart before the horse here, and the cart before the horse was the denial of discovery. So you are saying that that last phrase, when we're talking about mitigating evidence, is inapplicable um, or inconsistent with the Eighth Amendment, because once evidence passes the threshold of reliable and probative, the court can't consider prejudice, confusion of the issues, et cetera, as a reason for excluding it. No, to be very clear, it can consider those issues. I just think that the Eighth Amendment creates a strong presumption that those issues would have to be extraordinarily weighty before they could justify. But it justify. doesn't even say substantially outweigh, like 403 does. It just says outweighs. Right. And again, those just two of the exchanges over the course of about an hour and a half is how long the hearing lasted. A decision on the death penalty not expected, though, until sometime next year. If the Supreme Court rules in Zarnaya's favor, the government would have to decide whether to move forward with a new sentencing trial. Live in the studio, Nick Giovanni, WBZ News. All right, Nick, thanks so much. And I spoke with WBZ legal analyst Jennifer Roman to get some insight from her about the direction of some of that questioning Nick pointed out from the justices so far this morning. One of the convictions was conspiracy, mm -hmm. right? So clearly there was a meeting of the minds on some level to find the, the guilty of the conspiracy. But was that meeting of the minds an imbalanced meeting of the minds? Mm -hmm. Was it that his older brother, Tamerlan, was so powerful, so all influencing on him that he took, it caused him to do things he may not have otherwise done? So coming up today at 5 o'clock, how marathon bombing survivors are feeling about today's Supreme Court hearing.